the two people sitting next to me are very, very talented individuals who deserve to be heard, and you need to learn from them today because they know so much about an ever-changing industry and certainly in the drama section. So my name's Carolyn Reynolds. I'm, I've had far too many years in television, so we won't, we won't hang on, on that one. We'll get straight to the, um, the more interesting bit, which is to introduce the two guests today. I'm going to ask Daniel and then Marlon to talk a bit about just where they started from, what they did, how they got inspired to become writers. Daniel? Um, well, um, I would say uh, it all started when uh, we were in maybe sixth form college, actually, um, when yeah, we were around 16. Um, we uh, were already uh, friends. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and kind of growing up in the same area. But um, I think we just both discovered that both of us were very much into movies in particular, but uh, not just watching them and enjoying them, but actually wanting to make them and specifically to write them. And there wasn't anyone else, uh, there, apart from one other friend of ours, Jonathan uh, Pearson, who's a director, and he directed um, some of the clips we're going to see. Um, for the shows that we've been on. Um, and uh, uh, so it was really just us three that were into wanting to actually make them. And at that time, I'd say, um, when was that, like 1990, like 99? <clears throat> that seemed quite, un that was very unheard of. Things have obviously changed a bit, and uh, you know, thanks to more like digital technology yeah, and all that. Yeah. Like, anyone can really make anything. But back then, um, it was like, that's like impossible. But, um, but that's what kind of bonded us even more. It, it was, well, we really want to do this impossible uh, thing. And, um, and I think we both worked out that we were, like, so we would write on like notepads, like scripts, and not in the right format. It was just like, character says this, and so on and so forth. And, and that kind of um, got our interest. And, going and, and I would exchange my pages with Marlon and we both discovered we were ripping off the same films. <laughs> we were very much into the same uh, filmmakers and yeah. kind of um, yeah, just doing really bad versions of their uh, movies in these little scenes that we were writing. And so from that yeah, point... It was mainly you know, uh, Tarantino monologues. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Page yeah. and page of a person saying yeah. speech that we thought And did you, were you inspired by certain writers as well, or was it, did it tend to be directors and movies and was the, the, the complete package in those days? It wasn't just, oh, it's that writer that I want to copy, or? Um, I think it was mainly writer-directors, actually. Yeah, it was I mainly writer-directors. I think we both, I think Dan probably still does, we, we had aspirations of being directors as well. You know, okay. we wanted to direct. I think Spike Lee was a big thing. Um, for both of us, okay. kind of especially like do the right thing, um, was huge um, in our lives, and and, and um, we were interested in people who could kind of do it all. You know, it's like yeah. that's exactly what we wanted to. Well, the to do. the the interesting thing today is we're going to explore a bit about how you then break into you go from this is what we want to do to actually doing it mm. um, out of interest because we, I will do questions as we go along, I think, because that keeps things flowing for you guys in case there's something you urgently want to ask or whatever. But So we will have little pauses in between where we can try and get some questions in. If we do ask a question, we've got to get a microphone to you, and we've also got to get the camera to swear around to see you, so it'd be really, really handy if you could stand up if I've, if I've picked you out once you've raised your arm up and I've seen you. But just out of interest, how many people here would like to be writer-directors? And just writers, just writers, not anything else. Interesting. Yeah, OK. It's just it's interesting, interesting. To, 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 to see that. There's a lot more writer-directors out there. Yeah. OK. Before we get into how you ended up creating Writing Run, I think we should see a clip um, just to give us a flavour of the piece, and then we can talk a bit about the clip itself as well and some of the sure. history of how you got there. Can we watch <coughs> the first clip, please? Five a doping really works, you know. Mm. 
And go on. Well, that's it. And every now and then I get a call to go down to the station, but this is different, Kieran. I have to smoke that outside. You what? I've knocked it on the head and I don't miss out with stinking. Are you serious? They've done something. Like what? I don't know. They're not going to tell me everything, are they? What are you around here for, then? They might talk to you. I'm not fucking shoulder crime. You're their dad. Yeah, I know that. What's that like that for? It's what happens when you let them run wild, Cal. We need to do something. We? I don't worry anymore. Perhaps you can stop telling everyone we're still together, then. What the fuck you just say? Kieran... Don't do that. Don't say something and pretend you never said nothing. I fucking hate it when people do that. I didn't come here to talk about us. I need your help. Say what you just said. <laughs> Oi! I'm talking to you. Where are you going? I ain't seen you in God knows how long. They say you say hello. I'm fucking... It's a puff on that. Stressing me out. Great tension all the way through. Tell us a little... This was a, a major first step for you, wasn't it? How did the process happen on run? What happened? What was the... How did you get there? How did we, so... <clears throat> uh, it was our first uh, TV show and you know, how we uh, uh, broke in. And it all started um, when um, we wanted to create um, an online series, actually. So it was originally envisioned as, uh, but this was like in um, about 2008 at the time. Uh, and so back then you had like webisodes mm. and stuff like that, and just like these ten, little 10 minute clips. So we envisioned it uh, to, to be these little small 10 minute stories that all eventually kind of connected in some way, mm. but you could kind of watch them as standalones as well. Um, and that uh, they would amount to like an hour uh, once you yeah. added them all up. But then, uh, and, and, and the idea always was to um, uh, tell stories about people that uh, we knew and grew up with, because um, uh, at that time, uh, seldom seen on screen and in some respects still are. Um, but uh, also to, um, like, the, 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 the core of the idea is looking at an event that happens and how uh, it has a ripple effect and affects other people's lives. Uh, and also looking at how, um, you know, uh, we may not know the, the, the person down the road or the people that we walk past every day, but the strangers have an effect on our lives yeah. uh, in ways that we don't really know. And so it was uh, a way of exploring that mm -hmm. um, at, the, at the same time. <clears throat> so yeah, we we've, uh, were trying to do it uh, uh, as an online series, but then, um, and, and we shot a pilot as well. Like, so we, we put all our money together and shot like um, about, what, 25 minutes uh, worth of, um, of what we thought would be the first episode. Might add that it completely changed as to <laughs> what it was, but that's the development process. Yeah, we'll get yeah. to that uh, later. But uh, but yeah, we we filmed uh, uh, a bunch of it and then, and then wrote some scripts that would uh, were, were that were about the story that happened afterwards. So you, the idea that you watch it, it had a cliffhanger at the end, and then you could read. And if you really liked it, you can give us money to <laughs> to go and make it. Uh, but um, it kind of took a different turn. Um, the more we were working with the Producer called uh, Jamie De Cruz. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we um, we, because even even before that, so so we had the idea like what Dan was saying to do this thing about you know one story that set and and a, a thing that happened that set all these characters' lives in yeah. different pathways. Um, but I had been trying to get something going to for Jamie to Jamie for for a long time. You know, we'd written 
loads of things, um, had various different ideas, and not only Jamie, but other people as well. You know, we were just constantly, because of our inexperience. Right, so, we were, so were people sort of, were they reading your material? They were, or were reading they... it and it was like, this is really good, but who, you know, who are you? Are you? Kind of, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I think yeah. at the time, maybe, <clears throat> maybe Dan was, I think you was represented, then Dan, Daniel was the only one out of our little group of filmmakers who was um, right. represented. Um, and Jamie read, um, I think it was like a really early version of a, of, a, of a pilot, and we had made like a little series book. And he was working at a, a, a company that concentrated more on documentaries, mm -hmm. um, but he was very eager to get into drama. And so he was like, you know, we want to take this on, but because we don't usually do drama, it's going to take us, you know, um, just a little while to get our, our ducks in a row and think about the best way to get in front sure. of a, a broadcaster. Um, and so, you know, you guys are going to experience this. There's a huge amount of waiting time, you know, to try and get onto his very busy schedule. And as impatient as we are, I think we, we all decided that we were just going to make the first it's, one. It's that yeah. belief and commitment yeah. that no, you're going to yeah. get I, your I, material I, I, out I think there. we could see that, that, that there was going to be a problem at some point with yeah. the fact that we hadn't had anything yeah. um, produced. And so, like Dan was saying, we pulled resources yeah. and we made um, the, the original pilot of Run. And then we went back to Jamie and he was like, you know, this is brilliant, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't expect that you guys were going to do this, but <clears throat> just give it a little while and then I'll be ready because he decided he was going to leave that company and he produced something else that was very successful that luckily opened the door to him for him to go into Channel 4. And I think the thing that gave uh, Channel 4 some belief in us yeah. was that pilot. Okay. So yeah, it was very pilot. much about yeah. relationships, timing. Yeah. yeah. Commitment, let's yeah, be honest, yeah, huge yeah, yeah. commitment to just not take no for an answer, which is yeah. it's just a... Yeah, yeah. I think it's about, and I think it's like, <clears throat> you know, sometimes it's, it's that kind of like lesson of just go and do it. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't think without us saying, yeah. we're just going to make it, I yeah. think we, we would have got um, as far as we went. That, that feels like something that a lot of people are doing today. They're, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like the, the comedy series, uh, People Just Do Nothing. Yeah was kind of a bit like that. They'd done a lot of it themselves before they had gone uh, yeah. to a broadcast. It's almost showcasing, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Saying, this is what we can do. Yes, yes. I mean, you, you, the process, um, it, it might be interesting just to watch the second clip because the, the process that you go through obviously then leads to um, having to work with, not only in that instance, Jamie, but other directors, mm. actors, people then start to get involved because now suddenly your material is getting out there, but you're now getting experiences of dealing with a team. Yeah. Should we look at the second clip and then we may talk a little bit about that and, and get some questions. Sure. But we'll see the second clip, please. Mum, look, I just... No excuses, our reason speed. What, so... You're not even going to hear me out because there was this man Richard, and I had... you're my child and whatever you tell me, I want to believe. Sabrina doesn't have to. What does that mean? You must stop this. Let it go now. I'm telling you, let it go! Before it's too late. Bef you know, you're, you're giving up when you're trying to get clean. They say you've got to do it for yourself. Do it for yourself and no one else. She's my daughter, Mum. She's always, always in the back of my head. And you are always in hers. Right now, that's all you can have. So leave her alone, please. Please, son. Marlon, 
Holland, this beautiful scene was, how was it originally scripted? Who's influenced this scene? Um, I, don't, it, I mean, in particular, well, that particular episode was um, something that we wrote specifically for Lenny. So I think the scene, as as it as it was performed, was pretty much as it was in the script. I think the the things that um, were added was more of the physicality that Lenny brought to it. You know, he was very much. Um, he was involved in how he dressed. You know, I think he picked that out for himself. The hat, he went and bought that hat himself. Um, he actually went out, I think, for a couple of days before we started shooting and just walked around London as the character. Um, I think a couple of people recognised him and said, are you, are you related to Lenny James and stuff like that? And was just like, how come, I think someone actually asked him, how come he doesn't take care of you and stuff like that? Um, <laughs> But the, the physicality, I think, you know, when you are writing a character, I think as a writer, what you want is for someone to take it and to understand the essence and the heart of the character and then build from there. And I think all of the nuances and the subtleties were things that, you know, he might have added to particular parts of the scene. But, you know, words on paper, that was, that was very much... I've seen it was kind of based on a few real life kind of instances that we we've been around. When you're, I think you as a as a as a recovering addict, your mother yeah. is usually the last one to say done. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. And um, and did and did you find because um, because there were there was a very good cast overall, wasn't it? Say with Olivia Coleman, did you? In in the scene we saw before and and beyond in the episode, were you? Influen did you know that they were going to be playing those roles? And I know you'd, you'd, you'd written to Lenny, I think, mm -hmm. and you're saying... But not not to be... Olivia, no. Right. Um, Lenny was the only one that we wrote to, um, uh, I think because we just couldn't see anyone else okay. in the role. And also he had had a big influence on us because he uh, wrote a one-off drama called Storm Damage, mm -hmm. uh, I think at the end of the 90s, uh, like early, like, or 2000, um, which had Ashley Waters in it. Right. In one of uh, in a really early role, and it was set in like Brixton or, or somewhere like that in South South London, um, and we just hadn't really seen anything like that. We hadn't seen a lot of kind of black British drama. And it had Agent uh, uh, Dunbar uh, in it as well, and uh, we really liked that and always uh, wanted to work with with Lenny. So that's why we wrote to him. But with Olivia, um, no, she actually came in uh, to to read for the part. She wouldn't do that now, obviously, but, but back then. Um, <laughs> Which she probably would for you. No, she yeah, well, well, I would like to think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this was like before the BAFTAs and everything like that. But we had seen her in Tyrannosaur, loved the film, loved right. her performance. And so when she came in, um, she added uh, a lot of uh, details to that character that we hadn't uh, envisioned. Um, and like Marlon was saying, she, she kind of got it and then added more or to it. So, um, so that was a nice uh, kind of chemistry there, mm. uh, you know, where she just she kind of uh, ran with it and, um, and made, really made it her own. Good. Um, okay. Well, let's, um, I'd like to throw this open to guys. If there anybody, is there anyone out there who would like to ask a question at this point, which is very much about the early stages of the career, so to speak, so far? <laughs> anyone? Any questions? There's a lady in red over there for the first question. And then we'll come to this with this gentleman here. If you just keep your hand up, we can just see. We'll get a microphone to you as well. If the lady in red could stand up, wonderful. Thank you. When did your big break happen for you guys? So um, I guess um, it, it would be the the, sh the show that we were just watching that uh, again. Uh, so <clears throat> well, maybe there's two uh, you you could arguably say. So I won't deliberate too long on this. But so I think first of all uh, there's just getting like representation as a writer, and so um, uh, that happened uh, through writing lots of uh, spec screenplays uh, and um, through. A, uh, a person uh, that I knew who was a director and, and also a writer and was repped at a literary agency, I asked him to send uh, those scripts to his agent 
to see if uh, she'd be interested in representing me. Um, and I also tried other agencies and most of them have, uh, they don't read unsolicited uh, material. Some do, uh, but most don't. Um, and so there were lots and lots of rejections until um, I managed to meet someone and befriend them and, and uh, get, get uh, the script to their agent. And so, um, and then through that and developing run um, with Marlon, he also got repped by the same agent. Uh, and so uh, I would actually say that's a massive part of like having a big break, um, if you like, like just having someone who now professionally represents you and can go and uh, set you up with meetings. It's not like the be all and end all, like you still have to put probably more work in <laughs> once, once, you're, once you have a, a, an agent um, because you need to be thinking of new ideas and, and also be suggesting to them which producers uh, or directors you would like to meet. Uh, but uh, so I would say uh, there was that, and then um, some time later, going through the development process with Channel Four, um, making the show was like, <clears throat> I guess our our break in. Um, okay, could we take the second question here? If you could, wouldn't mind just standing up for a second, just so we can get the camera um, position. Okay. How important would you say smaller scale projects and creating a portfolio before, for example, um, being able to make that TV show that the first one mm. is compared to just getting the script to make it a good pilot for that TV show? Um, particularly in this day and age, because I think when we were doing it, um, it wasn't happening as often. I, you know, um, it wasn't happening that people were kind of coming together and then going off and making, like now, I think people are, you know, making a whole ep um, series of shows um, before they even go near a broadcaster. You know, there's lots of stuff on YouTube and so on. Um, but I think if you don't have, um, it's important, if you don't have a, you know, a, 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 a massive background where you've got lots of stuff to show people, to show that, you know, we're capable of doing this, um, then it's really important. Like when we started, um, we were just South London boys trying to, break into an industry that was quite difficult to, to get into at the time. And I think when Channel 4 saw that um, original pilot, I think just instantly they knew, you know, the tone and the style and the way we wrote from that. So it was kind of like there was a, almost like a, a familiarity with us f um, from the start. Um, so I think it's really, really important um, I think we were lucky as well, and, and, I, and I, you know, it says that a lot of you in here are writers and directors. I think we were really lucky as well that we found a group of people who wanted to do the same thing as well. I think if you're, if you're a writer who doesn't have aspirations to direct, I think it's really, really important to reach out to someone who is a director, you know, reach out to a producer, reach out to anyone who can get your stuff made because... Um, Sometimes the you know the words on the page might not be enough. Um, it's just really good to have a product that's been um, made, you know, for someone to watch. And the the inevitable next process comes when people see that work. And uh, um, Sky, for example, did they approach you then and say, "Oh, would you be interested in working for us?" Or how did you how did you get on to your next? Uh, well, that was um, through our relationship with Lenny James, actually. So uh, he had enjoyed his time on the show and liked not just what he performed, but the entire thing, um, and had an idea uh, <clears throat> at Sky uh, mm -hmm. uh, for a series of his own and asked us to, to come on to it uh, and, and write with him. And, uh, uh, yeah, and it kind of uh, we, we tumbled from there, really. Like he had... The, uh, like three scripts, uh, and then we worked with him to, uh, I guess, plot out the the, the rest of the series and, and write uh, episode four uh, uh, as well. Um, and so that led us into a kind of, I guess, a mini writers' room. Uh, mm, such. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that time he was uh, in America, so sometimes it was done over the phone. Uh, but it was still a, a, a version a of a collaborative that. process. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, should we should we should we see a clip sure. of yeah. Uh, yeah. of Save Me? I need you with me where I'm going. 
I'll make this the last favour I'm asking, but I need you to be there with me. Where have we gone? Hey, Nelly, where are you taking me? What are we doing? I need you to get me in there. Where? Into that bar. What, the one you was on about? To that door. Beast at the bus stop. Look, is that is that where you think the old is, mate? Because if that's what you're thinking, she's not. Richard, the, the one that I was on about, Cita reckons he's like a fucking OG to them, so he's out. Oh what? How I get to Jody. What, because Zeta knows some fella, that's why I'm being dragged out. I just need you to get me in there, Melon. However and whatever, make me known to him, and then you're good. You've done all I can ask. Well, I don't know him, mate. I don't know how I'm supposed to get you in there. You smell know. like one of them. You've got the stink of them on you. I mean, that's just what Zeta says, and she proper true knows. I mean, you have been in with them for 18 months. You know how to get me in there, so let's go. Oh! Oh! Even if I could get us in there, now what makes you so sure that that, that is your path to Jody? Hey, some fucking name a shag you don't pull that up at ass. You just do what I need you to do. No, oh, what? Hey, Nelly, oh, what? Oh. Hey, you'll tell the police what we've been looking at on my laptop. Hey, you'll tell what I've told you all around this house till me and Bernie get run out again. Don't make me, Melon, please. Don't make me. I'm not, Nelly, I'm fucking... She was in that room! The one I made you go back to. Jody was in that room. That's who's got her. She's not with some lone freak who's gonna be her and then dump her somewhere. She's with them lot. Those who keep them in rooms and film them over and over and over again. And if Sia's right, that fucking Richard, he will know who they might be. He might do. And it's the only chance I've got. It's pretty tense. <laughs> <laughs> Another tense moment. Yeah, they were very the, tense. Yeah. The sound plays quite a key mm. part as well as the action, which is very dramatic. So is that the director's input? Um, how much of it is changed as you go from script to shooting? Yeah, that's a good example of, like, so we originally wrote that scene to be inside the flat and it ended uh, in the flat with them, like, about to kind of, uh, or, or at least just, like, them uh, talking. Uh, and then, um, yeah, the, the director obviously felt uh, it was better outside um, and, and Lenny as well and, and added, like, the guy howling and a lot of the uh, sound design. So, so it's, uh, like, we envisioned it, uh, I guess, yeah, as maybe a, still a tense moment but more quieter in, 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 the, in the fact that um, what was added to it really... And again, I presume that's in early conversations between director and you before shooting... As a sense of, uh, I think more with Lenny. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, okay. It, it so can, it can be. I, I think yeah. it's depending on which type of what type of writer you are and where you are, kind of in your career. I think you've yeah. you've got writers out there who very much are involved in. I think you've you've called them like the British showrunners in a way. You know, who are very much involved in the, the directing and the production side of things. So they have a kind of an eye on every yeah. every uh, department. Um, I think in, in the main, you know, as a mm. writer, when you're kind of starting your career, um, you are writing something that is kind of, you would say, your baby that is, you know, in, intensely yours for a sustained period of time. And then if you're lucky enough to get to the point where it goes into production, you're suddenly handing it over to a whole group of people whose job then is, is to kind of... Uh, uh, Make is create really create well, it, well you, you you've know. got the idea and now yeah. that this is their them helping and, you create and, it and with yeah. that comes a variety of different ideas and styles and ways yeah. of of doing things yeah. um, and that's something that you I guess just have to work with yeah, yeah. it's a very collaborative uh, role and how do you find working together because that's quite unusual as two writers, isn't it? I know some people do, especially in comedy, they do. But yeah. but how how does the process work? Do you, does, does somebody write the initial draft or...? You or? can do. I mean, it's kind of... So we, we're together uh, plotting out and outlining the, the, you know, whether it's an episode or a feature film. And, uh, and then, so, for example, if it is an episode or a feature mm -hmm. film, We'll carve that up into, I guess, a, 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 an act structure. Um, and uh, one of us goes away and writes one. 
uh, you know, one act, maybe other act two, uh, and then uh, based on the outline that we both agreed on, and inevitably by uh, kind of parting, we're going to discover new things, which is the whole point, really. Uh, it's to kind of, uh, yes, to to flesh out what we've agreed on, but to sniff out anything new that might be better. Uh, and then so we come back together to see if that's happened. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, I guess we critique and uh, give feedback and again come to a consensus on what the rewrite will be. So I'll rewrite what Marlon's done and he'll rewrite what I've done. And keep doing that until um, you get to the end where... You think, it's, hey, quite, it's a uh, very close relationship, isn't it? As in, you've it got is. to trust each other to... Definitely. I, think we, I think we have similar tastes. Yeah. I think how we execute things might be slightly different, but I think... As long as you have similar tastes, I think it's important as well, you know, for you guys when you're looking for partners and people to work with, um, it's really important to find some people who, are, who have similar tastes to yours. You know, I think when we go away and rewrite each other's work, we might come back with different ideas, but I think 99% of the time, I really like what he's done. You know, you know, something that might surprise me or I didn't see coming or a curveball. I'd be like, wow, you know, okay, I really like it. Let's, yeah. let's kind of go with it. Um, so that's really, really important. I think that's part of why okay. it works. Well, let, let's just see if anybody would like to ask any questions about as they're delivering their own uh, ideas and creations. If I, there is a gentleman there who's just oh, put the hand up, but can you put your hand up again? That's it, lovely, so we can see anyone else needs to, so we can get a... Uh, right, and there's one right at the back, um, if we have a second microphone still. But let's start with this gentleman here. Um, with your question, please. Hi. Uh, how, do you, <clears throat> how do you approach the writing of dialogues so it sounds real and natural? It's a very good question. Um, I think first and foremost, it would depend on who the character is. So, um, uh, like, so the example of you seen, uh, I guess these are all um, working class people who, you know, us coming from working class backgrounds, um, have come across before, and um, and so uh, I think there's a personal experience in, in understanding how uh, they speak. And uh, but if you're writing, which we have done um, for maybe uh, people in another country, uh, like we said, we've we written like American characters for feature films that we're developing at the moment. Um, the best ways to r research, uh, I would say, like uh, try and find any anything where you can hear the type of person that it is that you're writing, uh, is, is speaking. And, uh, and also, um, <clears throat> I think we try and always uh, adhere to an emotional honesty. So uh, by that, I mean, so maybe you could argue if you really want to get down to it, maybe someone wouldn't speak precisely like that. But uh, on an emotional level, it makes sense and it connects. Uh, I think that doing a combination of those uh, two is, is probably the most uh, important way to make sure a dialogue sounds natural. We don't really talk it out. Like we don't, you know, some writers are a bit like, oh, we're gonna, you know, set like I think Tarantino, someone who says he does that. But I think for us, it, um, it's more in the reading. I think you can tell in the reading if it's gonna work. And uh, a good acid test for that is a table read, right? Like, so once something's gonna be made, and all the actors sit around the table just before production and start to say the lines for like the first time. It's like the kind of the play version almost of, of something that's about to be shot. Um, that's another f way of making sure is that sounding real? Is that um, obviously they're going to add their own uh, stuff to it, but uh, ultimately um, it could be a good filter for like, oh, that, that didn't ring true, Let, let's cut that out. Um, so I hope that um, answers the, the mm -hmm. question. And at the back. Um, did you always want to be writers and were there any other roles that you ever did? And was always drama your end point? Yes, um, yes and yes, I guess. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I definitely wanted to be, a, I had aspirations of being a, a writer, director. Um, and then... I just realized that the directors, they, they're just like, they never get a break. And it's like, and it was just like, <laughs> I, just, I, yeah. I think I might, you know, there's enough trying to get it right on the page, but at the same time asking, answering about a million other um, questions. Uh, and I just felt like I was more uh, in tune to creating characters and I'm 
uh, I think it depends on what type of person you are. You know, I'm mm. also quite into the person. Um, so, you know, me and the page was a was a much more interesting relationship to me than me and you know, I mean, other, other of developments people. and a whole yeah. team of people. And I actually like to create something and then give it to someone and then collaborate with them and to elevate in the piece. You know, um, I love that part of being a writer. There's quite a few writers who talk about as well, as, as they get more and more experienced, that's when they might say, oh, actually, I might have a go at this now as, as, as a director. And that's partly because they have more experience. They're probably not doing quite as many rewrites. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they then do have the time to think about doing or, or, or to sort of follow it through. Um, but I, I think, it, as you say, Marlon, I think it very much depends about the personality of the people involved. And sometimes if you've got a great relationship with a director, it's perfection because you know what you're putting down, they're going to make happen. Yeah, we have a very good relationship with uh, Jonathan Pearson, who kind of co-created uh, who co-created Run with us and directed the episode that you saw Lenny James in. So that he's very much on the same page yeah. of us. Yeah. I think it will depend on what type of uh, writer you are as well. I think there are some writers who we have met and who are out there who, you know, what they do put on the page and they are very, very protective of what it is that they mm. do put on the page. Um, I think we, when we work together anyway, because, you know, we do write separately as well sometimes, um, when we work together anyway, it's always a naturally collaborative process so we're very very open to people coming in and yeah. you know sharing ideas and so on but there definitely are some writers and, and it's not a bad thing there are some writers who are like you know this is this is my heart on the page and you know you're gonna have to fight very hard for me to change it yeah I think it's very much depends on the individual doesn't it yeah. okay let's um see our last clip actually from the, sa the same show it's still uh, and it's one from save me again Huge tension again. Yeah, you don't do much light stuff. I mean, do you, when you when you stage direct, 
I mean, it, it, what do you, you just keep it very, you know, explain, if you wouldn't mind, just so, that yeah. scene in terms of how you would so that, describe guess, that on the page. Yeah, so that was, I guess, an exercise in creating tension and suspense with very minimal dialogue. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff we've seen is lots of people talking and stuff, but as a, as a writer, you know, it, probably in a way more important a story uh, through images uh, um, more so than, than dialogue. So um, uh, so the way we constructed, you know, we construct that is to um, always bounce between the two characters' uh, mm -hmm. POVs. And, and to, but not to illustrate every single thing that they're seeing, only to highlight the things we feel are important to push that scene forward and all the story as a whole. I think um, that's a... Uh, important thing to kind of re remember as a writer, especially when you're describing action. You don't have to describe every single thing. You just okay. describe what's the most important. Um, uh, and, and also what helps to keep pace uh, and, and, make sh and make the scene flow in a, in a, in a I guess, dynamic way, mm -hmm. so especially uh, in, in a scene uh, like that. So, um, so yeah, um, did that, did that well, happen? it's the it's the, and I think it's it's that thing, isn't it, of confidence of writing that you could say this is going to be about a stage direction that I'm going to put down because mm -hmm. actually I can visually see it. I'm not I'm not. Um, the, the, there was an example many years ago. I remember watching on a drama. It was actually on uh, an episode of ER, but it was quite a fascinating one in that they, they the the last scene is about a doctor having to walk into a room to tell a husband that wife and baby have died. And we can all write the scene, it'd be very emotional, but we could all write our version of the scene of him walking in and he says it and the guy's there. But what they did was the writer said, no dialogue at all. I want to see through two glass doors. I can see through and I'm just gonna see the dialogue, I'm not going to hear it. And then you just see the yeah. father kind of collapse in a chair. It, it was a, a really good example of, it's not just your dialogue you're writing down, it's a visual of the whole show, isn't it? That, that's got to be conveyed, which, which I understand is sometimes easier said than done. Um, yes. What happens if you're not happy with how someone's directing. Have you ever had that? Have you ever had that thing? Or, 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 or an actor saying, my character does this, and you're thinking, yeah. oh, I'm not sure that's, I mean, what happens? Because there's obviously got to be some conflict here. Yeah, yeah, there can be, yeah. I mean, what you it hope is. is that you, um, you know, at the beginning of the process, you are in a relationship with a director where you, where you trust them, you know, and that, as I was saying before, that you're totally on the same page. Um, so stylistically and visually, you kind of, in, in a way, know where they're going and, and, and the stuff that they're gonna uh, come up with. I think with acting, it's a, it's a bit different. I think with actors, um, in our experience, we've always been more than up for anything that they want to bring to the table. And would that or be in rehearsal to, or? In rehearsal on the day of shooting, you know. Okay. I, I think we have had instances in the past where um, an actor said to us, you know, I know my character now and I don't think that they would say these words and can we have a talk about what they might say and how they might react in this situation. And I think um, in that instance, we're more than up for changing lines and so on, but I think uh, the, the problem in that particular instance was was that the actor wanted to change something that kind of had a, a massive effect on their whole episode and the, and, the, and, the, and the theme of the piece and where they were coming from, the emotion of it all. Um, and I think that's, that's something that's very, very different. I think you can tweak lines and make them sound better and use colloquialisms and things that, that naturally that person might say. I think when you want to change um, like someone's backstory, I think that's when there might be a little bit of a problem because the ripple effect of that is, yeah. is that you And in that instance, if that happens, that's about you sitting down with what director and actor and having yeah. a further discussion about why that character is created that way and what you want from that character so that 
yeah, the so artist is clear. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you can, in, in particular, like the the director for the actor is very important. So you have to be on the same page as them. Um, I mean, of course, if a director has um, uh, different uh, ideas. Um, I, I, I think it, it's a similar situation where you have to talk it through and try and find what it is that th they're not connecting to. Um, and that might yeah. mean a tweak or that might mean you convincing them uh, uh, or, or recalibrating the way that they see something. Yeah. I think that that's, uh, uh, you know, sometimes people, like the way <clears throat> we would envision um, uh, a particular moment to go might be different to someone else, and it's about trying to convince them to get to get them around to your way of thinking, but in very diplomatic ways, and, and it can be done without button heads. Yeah. I, I think as well, that's that's kind of like when you're talking about actors and stuff. That's something that's like really far down the line. Before yeah. you get anywhere near, you know, the production, you will have like you know pages of of, of notes, notes in some instances yeah. coming from four or five different voices yeah. about why a certain character should do this or why the story should go in this way. And as the writer, it's going to be your job to kind of get all of those comments yeah. aligned, but always answer them in the way that you feel most comfortable. I, 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 I don't think it will be helpful to you to, you to be like, yeah. shut, yeah, shut down the wall and be like, them. no, that's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. I think to, to kind of like say, I, I can see where you're coming from here, yeah. and this is how I would, yeah. would answer it. It's really it, clarity you know. of, mm. in the first place, what the vision is, getting back to that, isn't it? So yeah, people definitely. understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you've got broadcasters as well in there. These are the people, ultimately, you're selling, they're buying. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Channel 4 will have an agenda about their audience. Yeah. Sky will have an agenda about their audience. How involved are they in that uh, commissioning and collaborative script editing process as well as the team? Very. I mean, they are effectively the ones who say, yes, you're going to make this, or no, unfortunately, yeah, we're not going to make it this time around. So, um, so you get notes on yeah, what, you get, every script? Yeah, so the, the, how it works for us and uh, <coughs> how it may work for uh, you guys um, when you get into writing and developing projects is, um, yeah, you, you're working with, uh, you know, a producer, a production company, um, and they obviously want to put this on the channel, and so the channel is the one effectively kind of paying for the, the development, although sometimes it can come via the production company. And, um, but anyway, the point is uh, they have a voice, uh, the, 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 the people that, the company that you're going to make it with and the broadcaster that may potentially take it on, they all have a say in uh, how uh, it will be. So um, uh, you will come to a consensus on, I guess, what it's going to be. You go off and write it and come back, and then they give notes and feedback, and you have to, uh, I guess, uh, all... Uh, come to the same uh, agreement on uh, on how you're going to change things and how you're going to move things forward. And, and yes, there are some instances where um, uh, you may not be uh, uh, on the same page. Uh, and, and like Mona saying, yeah, you have to kind of um, figure out how to answer uh, their uh, their questions or and or notes in your own way that's still in sync with the, the piece. I think we would say that that uh, part of writing that. Uh, constantly like rewriting and coming back and getting feedback and going uh, back to rewrite again is probably about 90% of what it is to be a writer. That is largely what you're going to be doing. Um, it's constantly going back and forth. Um, uh, and But if, if, if it's working well, the piece is constantly getting better and better and better and more refined and more... Uh, 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 something. It, it gets more towards the vision, I guess, that... Um, uh, you as writers had, or a writer had, um, as well as uh, the producers as well. It should be a refining process. There are obviously instances where it can go the, the opposite way, but, <laughs> yeah. um, but I think it's, it's important to re recognise that, and that's why you always have to kind of hold on to uh, what it is that got you uh, enthused and, and, and passionate about a, a project in the first place. And I presume you also, you can do development projects, as in you're developing them, believing they're going to get made. Yes. But they don't always get made, do they? As in, um, I mean, do you want to just talk about, because you're now sort of developing projects further afield, as in 
your success, obviously, more and more people want to work with you, including, say, US broadcasters. How's that um, progression? How, how's that happened and what, what's actually happened as a result? Um, well, yeah, just to, just to go on the, the point you're saying about um, developing, everyone goes into every project wanting it to be the thing that gets made. And, and you should always, I don't think you should ever let any kind of disappointments dim your kind of light in that. You know, we've had disappointments or things that we've developed for, you know, a couple of years um, that, have ne that have never made it to screen. But I think we never ever kind of lose that enthusiasm mm. that when we get a commission and when we get things going, that first step, that it's gonna, it's gonna be made. Um, uh, the difference is, I guess, um, is that once you start to have some stuff uh, commissioned, that other people start reading your work, and then you know you open up different avenues. And luckily for us, because of Run and Save Me, we were able to go to America and you know pitch a couple of movies, concentrated movies, and specifically in the states. Um, and there's one film that we made with. Uh, sorry, that we've written for Paramount and another that we've written for Warner Brothers. Um, but that's a different process in a way as well because, you know, you, you do all the work with the studio and a production company. And what's important then after that is attaching the right person. So you can be working intensely on something, which is what we did um, for more than a year. And then it all kind of grinds to a halt whilst you're trying to get those people involved. So at the moment, both of those scripts are kind of in a, a holding pattern. Yeah, just because you so could be waiting a year, talent. say, for yeah. a director that, that to become available that you want to work with or whatever. It can be a multitude of reasons, can't it? Or the broad, or broadcasters suddenly got a full development slate of portfolio and wants to put this on hold for a year. But that, it, it I guess your message is that this is a rather frustrating <laughs> process. It's a, it's a marathon. Yeah. Not a 100 meter sprint. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. You need a lot of patience, very, very thick skin, uh, and, and like Marlon said, the ability to always bounce back with even more uh, passion and vigor than you had before. I think if you can clock those three, that uh, uh, you, you'll have a good time uh, in, in the industry. And, and how important was the. Um, um, because you have to have an American agent. Don't yes, you know, yeah. Can you just explain, because you obviously have an agent here, mm. but um, the agency in the States is in effect setting you up to meet, is that right? Yeah, so we, after uh, yeah, the success of the shows and stuff, we, we, there, were, there was interest from America, uh, in particular from an agency and a management. Uh, and just a quick side note, so um, in the States, they, you have an agent, like a, a literary agent or, you know, director's agent, but you also have a manager, like they split it a, a bit. In the UK, uh, you, they, there are more management companies happening now, but the tradition is, is that your agent's kind of also like your manager a lot. But in the States, they split it. And so uh, these two different um, uh, entities uh, yeah, wanted to take us on and we eventually went with them. Um, and yeah, they, the, we, you go over and they uh, pick out a selection of you know, production companies, studios, producers for you to meet and for you to pitch. Uh, and pitching, uh, uh, in general, is an incredibly important part of, of being a writer or, or a writer director. You have to know how to um, very succinctly uh, get your idea across in the in the most uh, impactful way as you as you can. But at the same time, make it conversational, you know. And the style of pitching in the in the UK and the US is very different. Um, in the UK, uh, it's maybe less polished, mm -hmm. whereas in a, in America, you know, you you talk for a bit, get to know each other, and then they're just like, okay, go. It's what, it's, what it's the presentation almost, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even talk; it's just go. <laughs> go. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's a uh, so that was a uh, we had to learn how to pitch. Uh, in the way that they do um, in, in, in LA and specifically, but uh, in, in America uh, in general. So, um, and yeah, so uh, it, we managed to kind of understand how it worked and, yeah, and got to sell, sell two uh, original ideas. Um, and yeah, like Mama said, they're in a hold, holding pattern, but what, what that specifically means is that they've gone out to directors 
and you have to wait uh, until the, director, the directors that they've gone to are very busy, so, and they also have other scripts to mm -hmm. read, so you have to kind of wait, and that's when the patience uh, comes in. In the UK, the patience, I'd say, has to come in in terms of once um, you and your you know, producer or whoever you're developing with uh, are really happy with uh, the project and the script, and then you, you give it to the broadcaster or whoever the, the, the person is who's going to make it, uh, and you have to wait for them to, mm -hmm. to get back and, and so, so on and so forth. So, um, so yeah. Uh, I hope okay. I well, um, our time is nearly up, but I think we've got some time for questions. If, yeah. if, if people would like to ask some, we've got lots here. Mm -hmm. So there's this lady here, if you wouldn't mind, the microphone is hurtling towards you very quickly. And then this second gentleman there, if you can just keep your hand up, then we, yep, yep, you've seen, been seen, that's great. Um, do you have any experience in prose writing? And would you say, if so, um, if it's a valuable experience to have for writing for screen later? Uh, so, no, we don't, but yes, it is. It, like, so we know novelists who uh, are also screenwriters, and uh, definitely it helps to inform the work. But also it's about a, a certain work ethic, I think. So if, whether it's prose, uh, if you're uh, you know, writing journalism, even copy, like ad copy, you're just used to having to write something, uh, in, you know, and edit it down for someone to read. Just having that as a skill base is already, you know, uh, uh, make you hit the ground running. So yes, I, I definitely we would say prose writing is incredibly helpful uh, for, for being a screenwriter. Although it's a very, very different practice. <laughs> you know, it's a, one's a, an exercise in economy, and the other. I guess you could be a, a, a lot more, um, but it's good to go from, I guess, having it all to only having to have a little bit, you know? Okay, and the gentleman there, if you wouldn't mind standing uh, up, I thank you. I think you spoke about it a bit, but um, how do you find the balance between how an actor portrays a character and how you want the audience to perceive the character? Um, well, I think, I think a lot of that is kind of, if you're, if you're lucky, a lot of that is ironed out in uh, auditions and rehearsals, I think. Um, to use an instance, when we wrote the character that Olivia Coleman played um, in Run, Carol, um, we lived with that char character for a very long time, you know, more than probably a, a year and a half. Um, and then she came into the audition and she gave us everything we wanted, but then added, you know, a little bit more. Um, I think if you can see that the person has the essence and the heart of the character, um, the additions and, and things that they add to it are, just, are, are massive bonuses. I think um, if straight away that you know there, there are other characters in those episodes where people would come in and just play it, you know, really over the top or really like angry when there's a certain line or so on. I think instantly you see okay, that's not what we're, we're looking for. Um, I don't think the person has to come in and, and do it precisely as you've got it on the page. If they can have the essence and the heart of what you're trying to achieve and then they add their own, it's only going to be good for, for your piece, I think. And one, one other thing, sometimes it's good just to let them try out this new thing that they want to do. Yeah. And Sometimes uh, even they will realize, well, yeah, maybe that wasn't right. You know, you just kind of. Sometimes people just want to try something, uh, and it's the no that creates the tension. Uh, you know, so being kind of open to like, okay, we at least we'll at least try to 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 see what it is that you're you're doing. Um, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. More questions. Um, there's a gentleman there in the blue. If you wouldn't mind standing up, that'd be great. And we've got one more question. If anybody would like to ask that. Yes, this lady here on the end, pointing madly. There we go. Okay, so the gentleman there. Uh, so, um, Marlon, you were saying um, the the sort of thing that makes your writing collaboration work is the fact that you both share similar tastes. Um, I've got a sort of... Uh, when I write things, I've got like my flatmate who I bounce ideas off of. And the sort of thing that makes art, we've got different tastes all together. Um, 
But the thing that makes it work is that we socialize a lot outside and a lot of the ideas we have is adventures we've been on and things like that. <laughs> so, um, and it's quite, it's interesting to see what takes we both had on that sort of idea. So my question, I suppose, for you two would be, do you guys sort of, outside of your working relationship, writing things, do you sort of, even if it's just like consuming like certain things together, like experiences, media and stuff like that, do you guys have time to socialize outside of like, well, yeah. or would you even want to? <laughs> no, 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 we were friends Definitely. before we, we were work. We, yeah. were, we were friends, you know, we're from the same area and we hung out a little, you know, uh, 16, 17, I think. Yeah. Um, so I, I've known him probably before that, since we were like 13, 14. Marlon was one of the best men at my wedding. I'm yeah. the best, one of the best men at his. So yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, we're it very kind close. of yeah, so, so, you know, we do have disagreements as well. Yeah. And it kind of helps that you can have an all out crazy argument and then be joking a couple of minutes later. You know, I think I think the fact that we knew each other before before we were writing massively helps as well. You know, because okay. I think you do find there are some duos who write together who have met each other whilst being in the industry. You know, or maybe have even had some success as solo writers and then start writing together. Um, and so when they butt heads, it might be a bit more uh, atomic. Um, <laughs> but we're we're able to have a disagreement. And, and move on. And, and like I said, in the main, you know, 99% of the time, anything we do do that is kind of like a curveball or a different idea, we're down. So, okay, yeah, that we've helps. just got the very quickly now the last question. Hi. Hello. Lisa, I wanted to ask you about your writing process. When you write a character, now that you've worked in the industry for a while, do you write for people you know? Or is that a shortcoming? Does that affect? The writing in a good way or a bad way? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we, we back and forth on this a lot as well. Um, I think it depends how how much you know you can really get them. Um, but also, uh, it, it could be limiting as well. I don't know. I think, I think it's project dependent. What, what do you think? I, I think it's project dependent. I think um, when you say about writing people you know and stuff, I think thematically, you know, we always write in things that affect us personally or that we've seen or family, that family members might go through. So, you know, you might write something that's sci-fi, but at the heart of it, it will always have that kind of theme that talks about glass ceilings or, you know, people that might have been in addiction or, you know, just things that can relate back to who we are and where we're from rather than being specifically about a person or a character in our lives. Um, I think early on, that might have been the case. I think there's some people who watched Run and were like, well, if that's me, what are you doing? Like, type of thing. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that, that now. You know, I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it was a... Uh, is that right? Was it, was it about real life people or actors? Sorry, actors, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, so for, uh, yeah, for the, for, I think um, if you're talking to your producers or wh whoever you're making it with, if they like the, the actors you have in mind, then yes, it, 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 it could work to write towards them. For us, uh, I'm talking about uh, on a personal level. Um, but if they want to keep it open, or sometimes this is what we find, like someone's like, we would be like, it would be great if this person was in this role and we've kind of got them in mind when we've been writing it. And they're like, yeah, not really, I don't really like that person. <laughs> uh, and that, that's, that's what can happen. So you kind of have to be able to move between, we, I'm talking about, have to be able to move between uh, the two. And it's, it's very project It's also quite good because it's a guide as well, isn't it? Which mm. sounds weird. But if you're saying to the director, this is who I'm writing for, this is who I've got in mind, yeah. even if the director's then saying, ooh, or not available for three years yeah. or something, <laughs> You, you can, it's, it's giving everybody a sense of, ah, oh, that's the kind of person that we're after. So that can help with the casting process. Well, I'm sorry, we haven't got any more time now. For, we've gone over our time, in fact. Um, we haven't uh, any more time for questions, but um, thank you for being a great audience. And um, Marlon and Daniel, thank you for a wonderful insight into your world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.